Good evening, good afternoon for everyone. Uh, you are very welcome to this new edition of the Master Coach Academy webinars. This is Alejandro Feige speaking, I'm the Academic and Technology Manager for the Master Coach Academy. And again, want to thank you for taking some time during the day to share with us this, this new uh, meeting. So today we are uh, uh, having a, a special event with Lars Eric Unistal. He is a member of the faculty of the Master Coach Academy. And we are presenting today Coaching, Mental Training and Positive Psychology, the Ideal Triad. Um, and I'm sure this will uh, give you the first steps uh, and ideas in order to enrich your coaching practice and to see how you combine the models of mental training, positive psychology and coaching uh, you'll know what they have in common and how they can be combined to, to increase your effectiveness in coaching sessions. All these topics, of course, are part of the first module of the Master Coach Academy, the proficiency module, that's starting in September in London. And in case you want to know more uh, on what will be covered, you can download or request the program details on the MCA website. So you, you can have all the details there. So. Uh, I want then to, to welcome now to Lars Eric. He's in Sweden, and Lars Eric is a, cl a clinical psychologist and professor of applied psychology and mental training, and also he's president of the Scandinavian International University. Uh, all what that I can say is uh, it's really little compared to his work and the, the number of things he is doing in sports and personal development. Uh, so I think the best way to to present him is through his his work and this presentation. Uh, so Lars Eric, uh, you are very welcome and thanks for being with us today. Uh, we can we can. Alejandro, Lars Eric Jonasson speaking from Sweden. I am pleased uh, that I can't see you, but um, we will uh, together go through a little about. Um, coaching, mental training, and positive psychology. Um, the first uh, PowerPoint is from a book we gave out some weeks ago about this topic. So I will uh, take up some things from the book. The book is in Swedish, but we will talk in English. So uh, we look at these three areas. Uh, the last, the um, oldest one is mental training. We started with that in 1969. Uh, we started the coaching course at my university in 1987. And uh, of course, positive psychology is the newest part of these three. Uh, with um, the birth of 1998 with Martin Seligman. Um, we have took over uh, him to Sweden in the 70s, and at that time he was working with um, hopelessness, helplessness. You remember the learned helplessness experiments he did, working with uh, also depression. But then he turned into some more positive things. So during uh, some decade he was uh, researching about optimism. And he has done a lot of research and uh, many books about optimism. And after that, in the uh, when the positive psychology started, he turned to happiness, among other things, and to mental strengths. Uh, and um, this year, 2012, he is turning into well-being. Um, so, we will have this as a background when we talk mostly about mental training and coaching. But first, some similarities between these three. Going from problem to goals and solutions, past to the future, clinical to developmental model, and to focus on human strengths and well-being instead of weaknesses and failures. Um, in the research area, to look more uh, about the positive feelings instead of the misery research, 
using more of positive feedback instead of negative, looking at the advantage in uh, different situations, and uh, using differences as a strengths, from problems to excellence. There are some differences. All three of them focus on human strengths and well-being, but positive psychology is more research and uh, provide knowledge about this area. Coaching is more about the use and application, and mental training um, more about develop human strengths and well-being. There are some. Um, differences between uh, mental training and coaching on one side and positive psychology on the other. Positive psychology is more about teaching, mental training and coaching more about learning, it's theory versus practice, talking versus action, and knowledge versus competence. Competence is defined as uh, how we handle life situation. And it's a big difference between knowledge and uh, competence. That's why there are very little relation between success in school and university and success in life. There are some differences also between coaching and mental training. Um, coaching more about detection of resources, uh, mental training more about development of resources. Thoughts versus images, more of images in mental training. Mental training is more of holistic thinking, more of goal directed instead of resource directed. Uh, often uh, it, you start with the resources and then you make the goals. Mental training starts with the goals and uh, provide the resources in relation to the goals. In mental training we have uh, um, taken away the R from smart model and uh, don't talk about realistic goals, talk about attractive goals. In mental training you use more of goal programming, not only goal planning like in coaching. And we also uh, use more of unconscious learning. And uh, one thing of coaching that we have developed is coaching the unconscious mind. Uh, what, what is mental training? It's a uh, systematic training, long term, of mental skills and attitude, and the goal is excellence. Um, after the mental training comes the mental preparation, pre preparation for uh, different events, for instance, which is pre-trained mental skills and procedures which are intended to become effective at certain pre-decided occasions. So training is a, a main concept which are different in, in um, mental training compared with coaching and compared with positive psychology. And here of course we have the whole debate about talent versus training, what is possible to develop through training. And then this uh, whole debate about do you have to choose your parents in order to get a good life or can you do it yourself? Can you see life as a do-it-yourself project? Um, depending on what we, uh, the idea we have, it turns to different uh, effects. The um, talent is more of pessimism, what we can do with the uh, upbringing, education, schools, training concepts gives more of optimism about that. Uh, it has also different consequences for the individual. The, the um, uh, talent creates more of passivity, do we have it or not, while uh, the training concept gives more of activity. It's difficult to uh, um, talk about the difference 
uh, also because of uh, there are prenatal influences. It's not only what we are born with. Things during the the um, uh, before birth, during nine months, that's important. It's also so that uh, when it talks about genes, they can be turned off and turned on due to mental factors. So it goes into each other. Uh, However, the, um, there are some big disadvantages of uh, having the idea about talents. Um, it has to do with motivation and in a book I wrote about mental toughness training, I have shown that people with too easy life, too little problems and obstacles, like talents, in sport and in school, seldom become what could be expected based on early success. So, summarizing, everything is possible to change if we find the appropriate training program. That has been a, a base for my work. It's just a matter of finding the right training method. So, it leads to designing your own future and to work with a developmental model together with a training model. Excellence is the main goal and um, this is different from the clinical view where you where most of interventions has to do with the negative part. When you get problems, when we get ill, then we do something in order to solve the problem. While the developmental model can work against uh, towards excellence, even if we have uh, no problem in the present. Uh, and um, if we take like health, for instance, excellence in health, uh, in the Clinical view, health is often regarded as lack of illness, and it means that we do nothing about our health until we get some health problems. And the goal is then to come back to the situation we had before we got ill. We talk about rehabilitation and so on. While the developmental model have the goal of, um, for instance, World Health Organization, definition of health as an optimal physical, psychological, um, and social well-being. And of course, no one of us, even if we are not ill, can say that we have this optimal state of health. So we can continue to work against excellence even if there are no problems. And this is an important part of mental training and developmental coaching. Uh, if we compare these two models, the negative psychology and the clinical model, identify the negative, the problems, the illnesses, reinforce the identity with the diagnosis, find the reasons to crisis and problems, create an insight about the relation between the past and the present, while the positive psychology in the coaching mental training, identify the positive, the goals, the solutions, create an identity with images of an attractive future, find the reasons to peak performance and well-being, and create insight about the relation between the present and the design future. Other differences is that um, the directions is way from in the negative psychology, in the clinical model, Emotions, dissatisfaction, goal, back to pre-problem level, attitude. Often you meet resistance to change because this is uh, based on the meaning that something must be wrong in order to change. Um, the positive psychology in coaching mental training has towards the goal. Emotion, dissatisfaction, joy, pleasure. Goal is forward to something better, and the attitude 
is the positive attitude to changes. You can be satisfied with the present as a base for development. There are different models of excellence we work with. I mentioned the two, developmental model, training model. The flow model is another. We try to identify the excellent state, what the control systems is demanded in order to reach excellence. And we have a cybernetic model that I come back to. There are personal excellence and um, I try to look into the uh, success factors and, and excellence in, uh, in the 70s in uh, 40 national Olympic teams. I found 21 champion characteristics. All of them started with C, so I call it the 21 C. I found seven shy-like capacities and five C's for team excellence. Um, from there, it has been important to look into the excellence in learning. I mentioned this difference between knowledge and competence. In performance, to go from uh, winning, which is not concrete, to concrete goal images. Relationships, acceptance and commitment training. Uh, if I take an example, uh, uh, sometimes I'm asking uh, in the course for adults, have you tried to change your partner? And uh, most many of them will say yes and I will ask uh, have you been successful and uh, no one everyone say no except my wife she said yes otherwise they say no so I say do you want to have um, a method which is very effective in changing your partner and they say of course yes and I said, it's very simple. You start with acceptance. You accept your partner as she is or he is. The next step is to um, create an image about how do you want your partner to be. And that's important because often we uh, are aware about how we don't want the partner to be. Here we are forced to create images about how we want the partner to be. After that we don't do anything. And some months later people often come and say my partner has changed very much. And in the beginning I said this, yes, you know it's because you create your reality and uh, of course you have a create a new image of your partner. And they say no it's not only that because even other people say that my partner has changed. So I think by acceptance you also can in combination with that model, with that image, you uh, uh, reinforce the things that is in accordance with the new image. Um, we can go from personal uh, excellence over to uh, health excellence, I mentioned that. And uh, let me take one example of even excellence in our inner organs to function. If we take immunology, um, it has been very interesting to make research about immunological excellence. We knew, knew from uh, Fieldingman and other research about the effect of stress and depression on the immune defense, that uh, it, it gets lower uh, the negative programming we know about from uh, cancer research, but also the lack of training in the hygiene hy hypothesis where we don't give the immune defense enough training by being too clean, uh, shower too much, and avoiding bacteria and such things. If we look at interventions uh, I have used uh, different things, stress reduction, 
uh, in one study I was able to show that um, when I measured the immune uh, defense with the um, T4, T8 cells, um, the positive emotions uh, created a better immune defense than normal. So now we know that it's not only stress and um, depression that lower the effect of the immune defense, but also the positive emotion can higher the uh, efficiency in uh, the immune defense over normal. The cybernetic gold program has been uh, very interesting also to use in uh, uh, this area. And of course, the mental toughness training has been one thing to use. Um, in terms of stress reduction, we have shown in several studies that the stress hormone cortisol goes down rather quickly after some weeks of mental training. In um, one study with 300 cancer patients, um, I could show that uh, just by changing the image of the future from uh, um, it's soon, my life is soon finished to uh, health, uh, it became a significant difference in uh, mortality rate. Um, as I mentioned, post emotion have had an effect of, of the immune defense and also physical mental training, toughness training. My wife and me is working with a change model for excellence, which uh, has the letters of change, starting with the coaching as an alternative method of change, hypnosis as a state of change, enhancement, ACT as an alternative model of change, NLP and neuroimagery as a strategies of change, generative images and cognitive training, alternative systems of change, and emotional training, contents of change. And if we look at the first change, uh, coaching as a part of mental training. Um, we, in the mental training, we use self-coaching or self-control coaching. You put questions to yourself and uh, you handle the coaching process yourself in the mental training. In the developmental coaching, where the coaching process, where the reason for coaching is not a problem, but the wish to develop, and where the motivation does not come from dissatisfaction with the present, but the longing for something still better, going from good to great. Um, another thing is that uh, we use coaches as supporters in giving feedback in the training when you want to become a licensed mental trainer. And the requ requirement for becoming a mental coach is that you have certification as an international coach and you have a license as a mental training. And these together uh, gives the mental coach diploma. Um, it has been uh, very important to work with alternative states of consciousness for change and alternative systems for control and alternative strategies. In terms of alternative systems of uh, uh, alternative uh, states of consciousness, hypnosis has be become the main uh, method. And in the 60s, I was able to show that the systematic hypnotic training increased the um, susceptibility score significant. The training uh, was a way of changing the hypnotic susceptibility. I also show that recorded induction gave the same Stanford score as live in hypnotic induction. So Hypnosis seems to be a self-hypnosis where you, 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 you needed to have some instructions, but the instructions could come from a tape, 
from a recorded session. You don't have to be there live. I made a LP record called hypnosis that was used on medical prescription in Sweden. And the first year it was prescribed to 26,000 people without any side effects. So after that, it was possible through the pharmacies to get it through uh, without any medical prescription. Uh, so it was very natural then that systematic self-hypnotic training became a compulsory part of the basic mental training, 1971. And uh, the mental room is an operation definition of self-hypnosis. I also today have a whole mental home with different rooms where um, yeah, you could do different things in the different rooms depending on your need. If we look at what happens when we go into that special state of consciousness, we can see that um, uh, the biggest difference was in the theta area not in the alpha, which we thought before. Uh, another difference was that um, in the mental room, the brain started to work as a unit. Uh, there was the same activity in the four quadrants of the brain. Uh, that was uh, very important. We start to call this the holistic brain concept. I made this research together with the Russian team. Mr. Pavel Bunsen was a uh, Russian professor that uh, made some of the research. And uh, this harmonization of the EEG activity uh, with the base, same basic activity in all the four quadrants can be one reason why images which is also a holistic unit, also effective in directing the body. Found another very interesting thing that the, if we took the ratio between the different uh, uh, EG frequencies, we found 1.6 in uh, four different ways. And uh, that was especially interesting, as you may know about the golden number and the uh, section divine concept, which stands for harmony, ba balance, and beauty. And this has been so from the beginning of the human kind. Um, if we look very quickly, uh, the pyramids have this proportion, the Greek temple, different architecture, um, United Nations, um, the um, art, you can find it in different products, uh, credit card, uh, license, and so on. In the human body, it's everywhere. Uh, it's uh, in the face, uh, in many different ways, and it's the only common thing of beauty uh, during the world, around the world. Animals have it, quantum physics, DNA code, solar system, um, and when NASA started to look into the background radiation, they found that the whole universe is related to uh, section divine, the golden number. So what does it have to do with uh, what we are talking about? It seems like um, the brain, uh, yes, let me also say that um, when we found that we started to, to construct the music uh, on section divine. So for the first time in the world, we have now music completely made on Section Divine. And uh, I 
put a little of that in the background when I'm talking. However, what does it mean? It means that uh, when we are in the, in the mental room, the brain goes into um, an operational mode which is related to harmony. We start to call it the harmonious brain. But we have also found that it's the same with the heart. So in the mental room, when we look at the heart variability, we found that um, it's the same here, that we get the quotation of 1 to 1.618. The same with the uh, body temperature, which is a um, section divine concept between freezing and uh, boiling. Blood pressure uh, seems to have the same relation. Breathing, I don't know yet. I'm uh, investigating it just now. Do we know that exhaling should be longer than inhaling? And uh, according to section divine, uh, for instance, 5, 8, and 3 could be the ideal. So, the in the mental rooms, the state of harmony, balance, rest, recovery, rejuvenation, the state of alternative system of control by images, triggers, programming, ideal states, the state of goal programming, creating memories of the future. We take one example of the first, rest, recovery, rejuvenation. Uh, here is one study we made with um, people who are training for six months and um, measuring um, cortisol and um, a hormone which measures the biological age. And uh, the study group, the training group, uh, they diminished their biologic age with seven years and six months. Uh, these findings, which is the first one in, in the world, where they have shown that uh, by a mental procedure you can uh, lower your biologic age, it was taken in into an international journal in very short time. And uh, uh, it's one sign of this recovery thing. In terms of peak performance, here is one example. Here is um, an um, archery shooter. She is average. And you can see the red, which is the left brain, is more active uh, than um, the right, which is the yellow. And you see the arrows when the, the, the shot is coming. If we compare this with her sister, which is a world champion, you can see that um, the 10 seconds before the shots, it's the same difference, that the left brain is more active. But when the shots comes, then uh, both hemispheres are, uh, hemispheres are integrating and is on the same level. And if you ask her, how do you know when you, you should shoot? She says, I don't know, but my body knows. The shots are coming when my body is ready to shoot. We have the A, which is acceptance and commitment training. The philosophy of positive psychology coaching mental training. The diagnosis of goals, resources, acceptance of the past and present, and commitment to the goals and ways to the goals. We have the N for NLP training, the strategies of change, insight of the present situation, association, dissociation, perceptual positions, the past as the goal mind. Exploring the future and being in the present. You have your G, which is generative images, alternative systems of change, 
images which has been very important to use as an alternative to language, as a direct path to emotions, language of the inner mind, language of the body, images as success factors, self and goal images. One example uh, uh, with uh, 40 people where one group learned to play golf without using a club, just by uh, in the inner mental room looking at one of the best in the world in a special way without analysis, just experience that they are playing. And of the 40, the best one was the 35 years woman who belonged to the mental group. So the first time she used the um, club, after three months, she was better than those who had been to a golf pro during three months. The same with the preparation for, for instance, for the London Olympics now. This is Stefan Holm who took the gold in former Olympics and uh, he has just written a book about his use of mental training to reach that gold medal. And uh, he is not only programming the mind before, before um, the competition, but uh, as you know, High Jumper also make a last rehearsal before he starts to jump. He tells the body by images what his, he wants the body to do. The E is emotional training. Um, both identification and transfer of positive emotions. I have a glow model of motivation instead of using fire. Uh, finding the ideal emotional state. Finding a balance between emotions and the prefrontal cortex. The role of emotions in decision making, releasing positive emotions through core values, and early learning of emotional control and development. In the schools, we use life skills training, and uh, that part which has to do with emotions and EQ has to do with perceiving to people and understand my own feelings, perceiving to people and understand other people's feelings express feelings so that other people perceive them right. This is what has been common in EQ all over the world. What we add to that is four, five, six, seven. Identify the best feeling in each situation. Pick up and create these ideal feelings. Automatize these ideal situation related feelings. And also emotional developmental training. I show in one uh, uh, experiment that uh, if uh, people had to choose between positive and negative images, they choose the positive, of course, but if they were asked which uh, image catch your mind more easily, they said the negative. So majority said that the negative, emo uh, negative thoughts and images catch the mind more easily than the positive ones. I looked into the reasons, and it seems to be three reasons. An old um, uh, system of life surviving habits, that the negative thought images were more concrete and vivid, and the negative thought images had strong emotional contents. So what we are doing is that um, we try to make the goals very concrete, and we make the goals very um, attractive so that they will have more stronger emotion and also more concrete. Ah, sorry. Um, here's an example of a, a method that can be used by focusing, learning to focus uh, on uh, the goal instead of the problem. Uh, three months of training for 70 patients with tinnitus. Very few of them got rid of the noise, but almost everyone got rid of the problem. 
And what they learned was to move the noise away from focus, from consciousness. So normally they were not aware about the noise. But if you ask them, they could go into the noise. They could take the noise into focus. But normally it was outside. And we use the same for chronic pain patients. Uh, that they learn to take away the pain from the conscious mind. If you ask them, they can go in and feel the pain, but normally they are not aware about pain. So this is a very interesting method. Uh, this 50 years with mental training, I will just uh, say that um, uh, in the 70s it was sport, in, in the 80s it was work health, clinical areas, 1990s personal development, and in the 20s started to integrate it more with coaching, which we are talking about now. And uh, let me go to... Um, the interaction between coaching and mental training a little more. Uh, by mental training, we um, can go from the intellectual goal setting to goal programming. And um, this is some very valuable addition to coaching, not only to have the goals intellectual, because then attractive goals can be a stress factor. But by programming, we are directed by the goals, but we can live in the present on the way to the goals. And if we go to the next step of the goal setting with the values, um, in mental training and in the, in, the, in the mental room, we can put questions to our inner mind which can help us to find our core values and also to create motivation. In terms of obstacles and problems, in mental toughness training, we try to do them to challenges, growing by problems, learning by mistakes, and so on. In terms of resources, we go from coaching research, resource identification and the resource transfer to resource development through mental training. One example of goal programming, um, one swimmer said before, uh, three years before the Olympics. I want to win the Olympics and I said the winning is not a good goal because you don't know what you have to do. It depends on the other. So I asked him instead how can, can, could you find the better goals and he said if I find the time uh, which uh, I think will be enough to take the goal then uh, of course uh, I will. my body will know what to do. So he, he counted the time he had to do in order to take the goal. And then he started to uh, swim this uh, race three times a week during um, uh, three years. Then two months before the Olympics, he got uh, ill and uh, he lost three kilo. He came to the Olympics in a rather bad shape uh, physically. Still his body made it and he took the goal. And I have still this race home on TV. And uh, uh, you can see it's not a perfect race. But I've seen so many examples that if something is programmed, the body knows what to do. And uh, this is a very big help um, to go from goal planning to goal programming. Uh, let me finish with them um, to say that um, another interaction between coaching and mental training is to uh, work with um, uh, the ways to the goals, um, working with different uh, exercises for mind expanding, barrier breaking, in order to be more brave in um, uh, choosing the goals. 
I often um, I have one sentence saying that um, the term impossible can impossibly be used about the future. If we say that something is um, impossible, we have to relate it to the past. Because what we mean is that, that with the methods and the ways we have tried so far, it has been impossible. But if we use the same sentence for the future, we will not try to find the methods and the techniques and the ways which can show that something that has been impossible up to now uh, will be possible. And I've seen so many examples of that um, what I 30 years ago called the banister effects. That when someone someone is showing that this is possible, then other people will say, no, then I can do it too. So, it's important that people in the coaching and mental training become banister people who can show other people the things they have believed was impossible, could be possible. The last um, tasking and the last interaction is about tasking using um, personal development through mental training as a life coaching process or using self-coaching as an important part of personal development through mental training. I think my time has gone, so I will thank you for your attention. And uh, if uh, some of you are interested by the Mental Coach Academy, which is something new, want to be a master coach, then we start in London in September 17 to 21 and I hope to see you there. Thank you. Many thanks Lars Eric and thanks to all for being present. Now we have uh, a few minutes to um, to have questions. You can send us a question through the chat window uh, so we can receive them and I will read them for you and we'll find the best way to, to answer them. So I leave you for, uh, with, uh, for a few minutes in case you want to send us a question. Let me see. They are coming. Uh, Luis is asking if he can have a copy of the presentation. Uh, Luis, we are recording this, this webinar and we'll be available at the Master Coach Academy website. So you will receive um, the link to the recording uh, very soon after the, the webinar, probably tomorrow mm -hmm. to be more uh, specific. Um, I have um, a comment from Anna Diver Selberg. Uh, Anna is saying, hi and thanks for this very interesting presentation. I have a question relating to working with clients with long-term illness slash unemployment. Uh, she says that it's currently working in a rehab project with clients in that category. I'm sometimes struggling with how to approach the coaching process because most of the clients are very far away from even thinking about goals. I have started them on mental training basic and working with the uh, acceptance of their current situation. And the question is, what will be your comments on how to start coaching with that category of clients? Yeah. Can you repeat the question? Yes. Uh, what will be your comments on how to start coaching with that category of clients? Clients that uh, are in an illness and an unemployment situation. Uh, both an illness and uh, unemployment or uh, both of them, or combined, you mean? She wrote it as uh, illness slash unemployment. Maybe it's one and other, both combined, yes. She's confirming both combined. Mm -hmm. uh, the um, acceptance part uh, uh, is an important part for, for all areas to um, uh, to start with the acceptance of the present and uh, in terms of uh, uh, severe illness for instance 
there is an expression in um, English called terminal illness, which is a terrible word because talking about self-fulfilling prophecies or talking about uh, uh, what kind of image do you get about the future when you hear the, the, hear the term terminal illness. So when, uh, when you change this image of the future to uh, something um, to health, um, some people will say, is there not a risk that you give someone a false hope? But there is no false hope. There is only hope or not hopelessness. So the, um, uh, instead, we, um, if you ask the, per the person, what image do you want to have of the future? Uh, they will, uh, of course, say, I should like to have an image of uh, recovery and getting healthy, but I, I cannot get this image into my head because, uh, as I said before, the emotional content of the image decides what image do we get. And if we are um, scared of dying, the image of dying will come, even if we don't want to have it. So that's uh, where the uh, mental training is so important, that we can program into uh, into the mind things that we normally with the analytical thinking cannot get into our mind. So uh, if we can help people with um, uh, with severe illnesses to get other future uh, uh, images, it's very important. Uh, when I was guest professor in Australia, I was looking into the Aborigines, and they have a kind of voodoo death where the where the medicine man can tell someone who had been sinful to the to the uh, to the other, saying that uh, in two weeks you will be dead, or next Thursday you will be dead. It's called pointing with a bone. Um, and sometimes this person will die. When, when, when we make autopsy of such person who is dying, we can see that the, the organ is still filled with blood. And uh, it's, a, it's a sympathetic death. And if we know that the person who is healthy and don't want to die, still can die if we get an image that he in his mind that he is going to die. And of course, if someone is very ill and uh, someone is telling that person or he believes that he's going to die, it will be unnatural that he will die. So by changing the future uh, images of the future, uh, it's a very important way of um, of, of um, 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 helping someone to live longer. Many thanks, Lars. We have um, Hello. yes, many many thanks. Uh, Anna is uh, thanking, giving thanks to you again for the for the complete answer. And we have a question from Oscar. Um, he's asking if you have a list or um, with some sports athletes that have worked with mental training. Uh, yeah. We have some mic it's um, difficult to hear. Uh, once more. Yeah, sorry. Um, he, Oscar is asking if you have a list with some examples of a successful sports athletes that have worked with mental training. Aha, you mean I did. Uh, yes, uh, in, in the, um, uh, since uh, 1970, when um, I started, um, if we take the first Olympics already, there was 
um, only 30% of the whole Olympic team who had been training mentally, but it was 55% um, of the finalists and it was 80%, 78% of the uh, med medalists who had mental training. So already at the first Olympics you could see a big difference between those who have been mentally trained and the other. And up till now there are um, a big number of gold medalists and uh, world champions uh, in the list of uh, who have used mental training. So, um, and I also worked with 14 uh, other Olympic um, committees in, in other countries. So the list around the world is very long now. Many thanks, Lars. Um, Oscar is giving thanks to you also. So uh, I'm, we are well near to to the time we 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 schedule, and we don't want to take more of your or time during the day. Maybe you are in the middle of the day working or finishing your day. So again, we want to thank you for being here. Uh, uh, also to you, Lars, for sharing with us this this hour and enlightening us uh, with mental training insights and how we can combine that with coaching. And of course we we repeat the invitation for you for the first module of the Master Coach Academy in London. Uh, the, this will be starting on 17th of September and the first module is about coaching skills and models, structures and models. So you will see this and many other models uh, that you can use in coaching and also how you can create your own coaching models, how you, you can develop your mastery to create your own coaching models. So if you are interested you can see all the information at the website and we are delighted to help you and guide you with any question or, or comment you have about the Academy. Well, thanks again and thanks Lars for, for this time together. Okay, thank you. Well,